it's Andrew here and in this session we'll be talking about uh, coding and documentation that's related to common renal disorders as well as urological disorders. Uh, just for a reminder, if this is your first time watching uh, some of these Coding Matters videos, we have a principal diagnosis that informs an acute admission along with secondary diagnoses and complications that add complexity uh, to that admission and the complexity then informs clinical benchmarking and performance, audits and also activity-based funding and that's what we'll be focusing on today. So in particular, we'd like to look at acute and chronic kidney diseases, so acute kidney injury versus um, chronic kidney disease, and mainly around how we can uh, document for complexity so we're actually giving accurate ideas of why those conditions are occurring and what stage they're up to. We'll look at some of the common urinary problems and symptoms and how to document them so they turn out to be diagnoses with complexity rather than signs and symptoms. And finally, we'll finish on indwelling catheters, particularly complications and how to document them. So to qualify a condition for a code, there needs to be a particular uh, diagnostic statement. Um, there needs to be some kind of diagnostic, whether clinical or through in investigations uh, workup to confirm that diagnosis, and then some kind of care plan that's associated with it. Within kidney failure or kidney disease or kidney injury, all of these terms are somewhat synonymous. Um, we can particularly look at acute kidney injury or um, acute renal failure as it used to be called. I prefer the AKI kind of term because it implies that it is at least somewhat reversible. We classify the cause of these as pre-renal, intra-renal and post-renal. And probably where we go wrong then is that we're not then documenting the actual cause of those within pre-renal, intra-renal or post-renal. And there may be sometimes more than one uh, contributing cause. The most common one is to say, this is a pre-renal AKI, that's fine, and we would know what that means, but if we're saying it's pre-renal, almost all the time we're saying it's dehydration, and if it's dehydration, we should probably just write dehydration, um, whether you want to write the pre-renal or not. The more detail you can add to why you think or why it's confirmed the person has that acute kidney injury, uh, the more it's going to be codable and then come out specifically with uh, a diagnosis that's more specific, as well as uh, complexity that is more reflective of that uh, admission. If there's just unspecified kidney failure, it comes up as just renal impairment or uremia, non otherwise specified, not a great diagnosis, doesn't code well. On the chronic kidney disease side, again, identifying the likely uh, disease underlying this, we probably don't do this well enough unless they're specifically seen by renal, and it doesn't need to be 100%, you don't need to have a renal biopsy to prove the exact underlying disorder. But if they're a person with long-standing diabetes and hypertension, it's probable that it's going to be hypertensive and diabetic nephropathy. And just documenting that, even if it's a likely or presumed, uh, to express that there is perhaps not complete diagnostic certainty, but we're reasonably sure of it, that's completely reasonable and it will, at least it will code. In terms of the stage of CKD, that is also really important. We often are writing just the creatinine number, uh, but someone who's doing coding can't interpret a creatinine number. They need to have a documented GFR or ear GFR or a specifically documented stage. And in particular, stage four and stage five kidney disease makes a big difference in terms of complexity. Stage one, two, and three, not so much, but stage four and five do. So if you're gonna put in a particular effort in this area, I'd love to see the underlying disease that's contributing to the CKD, and I'd love to see documentation of a GFR and stage, particularly for those that are in stage four and five, which should be changing a lot of their management in terms of medications that we can and can't use at that stage. Just an example, if you're just writing creatinine 150, you can't code that. Uh, there's, it doesn't come out as a GFR or a stage. Um, they're not, coders aren't able to then look up other information correlated with a, a weight to come up with a calculated GFR. It, it needs to be either a GFR that's documented or a stage that's documented. We can't interpret that data. What's easily coded is stage four, CKD stage four, a GFR of 27, that can be coded. In terms of urinary symptoms, we write a lot of these um, frequently, but we often, they're, well, often they're uncodable because uh, they don't actually have anything to qualify um, the reason for it. So if there's difficulties with pain or uh, micturition, um, I often think of uh, you know, prostat uh, prostatism type symptoms. Um, you can't just write prostatism, it needs to be prostatism secondary to likely BPH, so prostatism secondary to likely prostate cancer. There needs to be a disease that's underlying those symptoms. The same thing with dysuria. Dysuria secondary to obstruction, dysuria secondary to infection, and if it's infection, then what's the organism? Are we testing, are we treating it? Uh, nocturia and polyuria, is it secondary to 
diuretic therapy? Is it secondary to uncontrolled diabetes? Is it secondary to BPH? Is it secondary to uh, stress incontinence? Whatever it is, we need to be writing those under there. Likewise with hematuria is always signifying there's something going on upstream. So is it due to urethral trauma? Is it due to bladder cancer? Is it due to um, uh, super therapeutic warfarin? Whatever it is, we need to be writing it. And if you're not sure, it's okay to be not sure. You just have to write what you think it is. And in terms of the con incontinence, you just simply need to write the type of incontinence. It doesn't necessarily need to be a pathology that's underlying it, but just simply the type of incontinence, whether it's stress or urge or other. In terms of urinary retention, this is a disorder we see a lot. Um, we often write urinary retention. We don't write why the person is in retention, which is a pretty important question to be asking. If you're not sure, that's okay, but at least have a differential diagnosis and maybe one that's more likely than others. The common ones that you'll be able to see, BPH, bladder cancer, bladder outlet obstruction, and ideally you're putting a reason for why that is, um, a urethral stricture, whatever it is, uh, please do write what you think. In terms of indwelling catheter complications, uh, these can be displaced. And if they're displaced, we need to know, is it something that happened just because of mechanical uh, failure, as in it got caught on something and pulled out? Was it dislodged particularly by the patient, either by accident or deliberate efforts? And usually if it's dislodged and the balloon's still inflated, you're likely to get some trauma or injury. And that is something that we're not documenting well, but will actually add a lot of complexity. And so even just simply writing that it was dislodged by a patient accidentally causing urethral trauma with hematuria would be excellent and, and in terms of codeability. Uh, likewise, you know, let's say that there's an catheter and then it gets obstructed. There could be a clot obstructing the IDC. There could be uh, an IDC related infection. Whatever it is, you can write it there as well. And if there's leakage, you can also write that down. So let's go through some examples at this point. Yes, this patient's admitted for two days with uh, AKI on the background of CKD and has urinary retention. Just writing that, minor complexity, $4,000. Let's say that they're admitted, same kind of issue, and then this time we flesh out a bit of the urinary retention, and we simply put due to BPH with bladder neck obstruction. I think you could even do it without the bladder neck obstruction. That's giving more than doubling the income to eight and a half thousand dollars. Here's another one: patient admitted for five days with a diagnosis of AKA on a background of CKD, dehydration, and urinary incontinence. We haven't put the subtype there. Very simply, we've just put the overflow urinary incontinence due to BPH, and suddenly the complexity increases significantly to 8,500. Patient admitted for five days with hematuria, AKI, dehydration, and CKD. Here we've added the hematuria, and we've you know, qualified why it is. Hematuria is associated with BPH, and that again increases the complexity significantly from almost 3,000 to almost 8,000, which is a big difference. Patient admitted for four days with CKD and hypertension, just a minor complexity, very minimal. But if we were to link those two conditions together and say the CKD is secondary to hypertension or something that sounds a bit nicer, which is hypertensive kidney disease, that increases the complexity to major, which is $4,000. Patient admitted for four days, UTI, AKI, CKD and urinary retention. Again, if we add BPH as the urinary retention cause, we increase the complexity and double the income. So here's another one with a patient admitted for five days with leg cellulitis, AKI, and CKD. Here we've actually qualified that the AKI is due to dehydration, which is likely secondary to the cellulitis, and then the complexity increases to major and the income doubles. Are you seeing a trend here? I am. Patient is admitted for four days with a UTI, AKI, and urinary retention. They dislodge the IDC, it's not said why that happens, and causes hematuria, $3,000 minor complexity. If the patient dislodges the IDC and it causes penile or urethral trauma or injury with the hematuria, because we've added that detail in there, we increase the major complexity and double the income. So really simply, uh, this one's a, a quick overview of, of renal and urological disorders that can be coded more easily. If the, you've got an AKI, please document a cause, not just a classification of pre-renal or post-renal, but an actual specific cause, and maybe there's more than one, you can list more than one. If they have CKD, please document a stage or a GFR, and this is particularly important in stage four and five chronic kidney disease. If you have someone with urinary symptoms, whether it's dysuria, hematuria, nocturia, incontinence, actually documenting the detail of why this is occurring or the subtype of incontinence will add complexity significantly in most, uh, in most DRGs. And lastly, if there are complications related to IDCs, which there often are, unfortunately, uh, documenting these in detail will enable appropriate coding and then appropriate funding to reflect that.
So thanks for listening.